Amen. Today I want to speak on faith. How many people believe that we need a bit of faith? The Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you this morning, by your Spirit, Lord, you just allow that anointing to flow. My God, I just tap into that mighty reservoir of your power, of your anointing, my God, and I pray that I'll be able to minister out of the unction of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that the anointing would just come and flood into me right now and over us, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And my God, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. How many people believe that Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forever? He has never changed. He has not changed one little bit. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith, I believe, is something there that we... we that, that God wants to work through our lives. He wants us to start to believe Him. Unbelief is obviously the opposite to faith. Unbelieving will, will destroy you. It will keep you down. But I want to tell you, if you can live a, a life of faith where you put your trust in God, I want to tell you, you're on the ride of your life. Amen? It's the most exciting journey you can ever have because no weapon formed against you can prosper. If God be for you, who can be again you? So faith is the uh, substance of things hoped for. It's something there that you hope, you know, friend, a lot of people just pray and pray and pray, really not expecting. A lot of people pray and never, ever experience the manifestation of what they're praying for. I believe that there has to come a mind shift. I believe there has to come a shift in the way we pray, the way we think, and the way we do things, that when we stand and pray, we believe that God hears us and that we believe that it is God's intention to answer us, amen? And we stand there with, 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 a, with something on the inside of us that rises up, that calls upon the power of God, that actually connects with heaven and calls the very substance or the thing that you're hoping for and you're believing for will actually be manifested in the natural in Jesus' name, amen? I believe that there has got to come a shift. We, we see the people of old, we see the disciples, when, when they, they put their trust in the Word of God. They put their trust in God, and I, I believe that that's what's going to happen. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And you know, I know that there's a, a lot of times when we pray and we pray and we pray and nothing happens and all of a sudden something starts to rise up within you and you get, start to get discouraged, you start to get disappointed. But I believe it's the way we pray. I believe that there's something that's got to change. Anybody believe that there's a shift in the realm of the Spirit? There's a shift in the way we're doing things? And, and I believe that this is one of the things. So I want to really encourage you. 1 John 5 uh, verses 4 and 5, it says... For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I want to tell you that you really are an overcomer. You are a victorious person. You are by the fact that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, that makes you more than a conqueror. That makes you victorious. That makes you a ruler and a reigning with Jesus, a reigner with Jesus Christ. That makes you something spectacular. That makes you something different. And it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen? Your faith will give you victory. Your faith will cause you to triumph. Who is he who overcomes the world? Who is this person that, that the Word of God is speaking about here? Who is this, this person that, that has got so much you know, going for him? Who is this person? I want to meet this person. Well, I want to tell you, when you go home, have a look in the mirror. It's you. You see, when we think it's somebody else, when we think it's, it's somebody like Catherine Kuhlman or Benny Hinn or, or Oral Roberts, it's over there, it's somebody else. But friend, I've got to look myself square in, in the mirror and say, this is talking about you. You are the one that God has taught. Who is the one that overcomes? Who is this person? Who are, who are these people? For who is he? who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then you're talking about yourself. How many people here believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Come on, give me a big wave. Well, he's talking about you. He said, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes? 
You are an overcomer because of Jesus Christ. You're an overcomer because of, of what this communion represents. You're an overcomer because of the victorious power that Jesus has given to us. What stops us from entering in to the fullness of our inheritance? How many people know that God has given us a great inheritance? It's an amazing inheritance that God has given us. He's given us peace. He's given us love. He's given us victory. He's given us uh, everything that we ever need. He's given to us. So who, you know, how is, what, what stops us from entering in to the fullness of our inheritance or the fullness of our victory? I want to tell you what stops us. It's how we think. It's how we think. We can think everything's in the future. We can think that I'm not good enough. Or we put it in somewhere over there that sometime we're going to do it. You see, if you're just hoping for something, when you're hoping for something, it's over there. But we've got to bring the hope that's over there into the now. Everybody say now. Into the now. We've got to bring what we're, what we're believing for into the now because it's possible. We think everything's in the future. We have to bring the promises of God into the now. In John uh, 4.34, it says, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And it says, Do not say there are still four months and then the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field or at the world for they are already ripe for harvest. Don't defer it. It's now. You see, if, we, if we've got everything in the future, if we've got everything over there somewhere, we're not really believing for it to happen right now. But I want to tell you, we've got to bring this stuff into the now time. Just read these scriptures when you go home. Read these scriptures and let them get into you. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want to tell you, can I say this again? There's got to come something different. It's not a matter of just having a little headache prayer. Oh God, help me, bless me. No, there's something that I believe that God is going to do. The Bible speaks about the fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Amen. And a fervent prayer. I believe that God is going to start, start a fire on the inside of us. It's going to come as the anointing gets on the inside of us. And we're going to start to pray, not just as people pray, but we're going to start to pray as, as God gives us an unction on the inside. And we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray in the Spirit. And I want to tell you that fervent prayer of a righteous man is going to avail much in Jesus' name. Amen. There's something that's going to happen in our prayer life, that we're just not just going to play tiddlywinks, but there's something there, I believe, in the fire of God that's going to start burning within us. And I want to tell you, friends, there's something there that I'm believing for. I'm believing for the youth of this, of this city. I'm believing for a move of God. I get so upset when I see the kids the way that they're just destroying their lives, uh, pumping heroin into their veins, unwanted pregnancies, life being destroyed, kids that are, that are just being flooded with drugs and goodness knows what else. We're looking at, at, at so much in, a, in our society today. But I want to tell you, friends, my hope is that the now will come to pass and that we're going to start to see something happen. We'll start to see a bunch of young people, not just playing games and things like that, but a bunch of young people that are on fire for God, a bunch of senior citizens that are on fire for God, a bunch of the church alive, hallelujah, not just going to church, but being the church on fire for God, moving in the power of the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders and miracles, doing the work that God has called us to do. So I believe that we've got to have a mind shift, that we see our position and who we are and what God's called us to do. And, and, and I believe that we're going to see these things. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Can, can I go after God? Amen. I want to just uh, open up your Bible to so the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. It's an amazing chapter. Amazing book. Amen. It says here in, in uh, 
In 11, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1, verse 1, verse. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. Friend, there's a supernatural manifestation of God's power that God wants to bring to the church. Can I say it again? There's a supernatural expectation. There's a supernatural manifestation. There's a supernatural something that God is going to put in every believer that will take us away from the natural into the supernatural realm that we'll realize that the things that we're asking for, God can create out of nothing. God can, uh, can create, he made the worlds out of nothing. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Everybody say, not yet seen. I want to, can I say it again? There are things there that God wants to reveal to us, things that are not seen yet, things that we haven't seen, but God wants to reveal them to us by His Spirit. And I believe that what God wants to show us in this hour that we're living in is the church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ. You as a believer are more than a conqueror. You can do exceedingly abundantly above more than you could ever imagine or think. God wants to take us out of the natural man into the supernatural spiritual man. And I want to tell you when that starts to happen, He will, he will show us things that are not yet seen. He was moved with godly fear. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he had, uh, so he would receive an inheritance. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise. He waited for a city which had a foundation whose builder and maker is God. I want to tell you, God is going to build his church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. What I'm seeking for, friend, I'm not seeking for a high steeple few people. I'm not seek, seeking for something that, that a lot of people are seeking for today. I don't care whether we meet in a shed. I don't care whether we meet in a tent. All I care about is that God will be there. Amen. All I'm believing is that we can get our eyes off the natural and we can see a supernatural move of the Spirit of God. We can see something dynamic and something so powerful. This man wasn't seeking something there that would be made by natural hands. Friend, God said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I tell you what, there's a fervent prayer that's beginning to stir and rise up in the people of God. I want to tell you the hardest meeting to get anybody to is a prayer meeting. Because Satan knows what will happen. He will get you distracted. He will cause many things to happen to keep you away from the prayer meeting time. Because he knows that if you can get hold of God and God will hear your prayers, his days are numbered. That will send him up the road in a... Oh, shakabundi. <laughs> The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. I want to tell you the God, the, the, de the God of this world, the devil, will run in fear of the church in Jesus' name. You want to get the devil off your case? I want to tell you how to get the devil off your case. Get full of the Holy Ghost and power and start telling him who he is and who he shouldn't and what you know about him. And I want to tell you, he will run in terror. When you know who you are in Christ, the devil won't hang around you. I heard John Osteen say that the, that the devil used to go around knocking on doors and harassing people. And then he gave this devil such a hard time that the devil fled from his house. And, and he said that the next week they were going by again and the devil said, don't go into that house. <laughs> to his mates, hey, I want that, amen? Don't go in that house. You'll kick your butt. <laughs> amen? 
Don't go in that house. He, he, he. Anyhow. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. Friend, I want to tell you, I believe that there's a stirring going on in the church. I cannot emphasize it strong enough, but there's something here where we're going to stand up and we're going to judge him faithful. Hallelujah. And he says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. We will not fear what the enemy can do because we know that our God is greater. We know that our God is stronger. Hallelujah. We know that our God is before us. Who can be against us? Because his faith is going to rise. I, I just pray that there's a stirring going on on the inside of you like it's going on on the inside of me. I'm believing that I don't care what I see. I don't, will not get discouraged if nobody turns up tonight because I know it's begun. Hallelujah. I know it's begun. Hallelujah. We've begun something and God said He will go with us. The, God, the, 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 the children of God, the, the disciples, they got up and God went with them. I want to tell you, I believe that if you can rise up and start to dare to believe God and allow that anointing to get around your life and you start to speak what God says and not what popular opinion says and you start to speak the Word of God, God will go with you and He will confirm the Word with signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. I was having a cup of coffee with Joe the, the, the other day in the, in the shopping center. And I want to tell you, there's something stirring. And I saw this mother and a, and a daughter come over. She was about 18 or 19, the daughter was. And, and she sat down and she was obviously in agony. She was in pain. And the mother was distressed. What, to, what can I do? And I walked over to this little girl and her mother and I said, excuse me. I said, it is very obvious that you are distressed and you are in pain. She said, yes, we are. But she said, I'm okay. I said, I'm a pastor. Can I please pray for you? She said, yes, but I'm sitting here with my mother. I couldn't care less where you were sitting. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? Mother, is it all right if I pray for your daughter? And they sort of humbled and, and she was quite just, you know, not happy with me at all. But I glad, grabbed one hand on her head and another hand on her shoulder and I started to pray and ask God to come into her and touch her and I asked for God to anoint her and the presence of God and I took my hands off her and she looked at me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> and I walked away, went back and finished my coffee. About five minutes later, they got up and walked away. When I finished doing what I was doing, I went to go out of the shopping center. And as I was walking out of the shopping center, this young girl and her mother were walking back in. And they looked at me with a big smile. I don't know what happened. I don't, don't have to know what happened. But I want to tell you, if you're bold enough and if you're prepared to go out there, I was not trying to be intrusive. I was not trying to be religious. I was not trying to do anything. I just saying, I, I, I'm a pastor and can I pray for you? That's all you got to do, amen. Betty, come up here. What happened to you Sunday night? <laughs> you threw something at me up the back of the hall. And I reached to grab it and went splat on my back <laughs> and just stayed there for a while. I was very unstable for a wee while. Very after. stable, but unstable. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Betty was up there at the back of the hall just mind her own business I want to tell you God's building something amen he's building his presence he's building something she was up the back of the hall there and I could see her she was sort of up there with her husband John because he was doing the, doing the thing and that was right up the back there and I felt a bit sorry for her because she was out of it and we were praying for people and things were happening in the front of the hall and I said hey Betty she said what I said here have a bit and as I threw it over, she, she went running for it and bang. Ooh, I like that. Amen. Signs and wonders. Miracles. When God moves. Amen. That's a sign and it's a wonder. I was wondering what was going on. But anyway. Faith in God will move the mountains. Amen. Faith in God will do amazing things. We've got to have faith. Faith, faith, faith. We see faith there. I believe there is only one way to all the promises of God, and that is the way of faith. Faith in God. By faith in God and, 
and God alone, we enter into the fullness of the victory that Christ has won for us. Father, give us a revelation of what you have done for us that we might enter into it. How many people want to enter into what God... Come on, how many? Lift up your hands if you really want to enter into it. Father, we, you see our hand. Lord, please, please God. Come on, cry out to God today. Lord, we want to enter into the fullness that you've provided for us. We don't want to, we're not beggars, but Lord, we want to enter into what you've made available to us by your blood, by your precious, precious blood, by giving your life for us a ransom for sin. The promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. To them that believe the promises. There's no other way complaining Getting mad with God, begging won't work. I don't know about you, but my mind often goes to think about God and, and who He is and the majesty and everything that He's done. I, I, I see Jesus, the price He paid, and His church down here sometimes struggling, going through stuff that God never, ever intended the church to go through because he gave us victory over it. And I likened it a little bit to you've a mother that's been working in the kitchen preparing a hot meal. She's worked there. She's done everything. She's got it all ready. It's, it's going. It's, it's all ready to go. And as, the, as, as she's plating up, I got that from some of the TV shows. <laughs> as, as she's plating up, getting it ready to, to present it to her family, she hears a sound coming from the lounge room. Oh, I wish we had something to eat. I'm starving. And you know, we the church, sometimes when we pray, that's how we pray. Don't you care we're perishing down here? Don't you care we're starving? Don't you care that we're having a hard time down here? Don't you care that the devil's... Don't you care? He's, he wants to slap us up the side of the head. Don't you care? Look at Jesus hanging upon a cross and then say, don't you care? He, he paid the ultimate price. He gave his life. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I've given you everything. Come and dine. Come and get it. Hallelujah. That's what mama says, come and get it, kids. And there's a rush coming in. And woof, I want to tell you, God has set a table before our enemies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He has prepared it with every spiritual gift that you'll ever need. He has prepared it with every spiritual thing that, that will destroy every work of Satan. And there's a bell that's ringing and it's saying, come on, the dinner's ready. Come and get it. Hallelujah. Come and get it. Turn to somebody and say, come and get it. <laughs> come and get it, glory to God. Come and get it. It's there, amen. How hungry are you? We have to come to him his way. And that's through the open door of faith. Say that again, Neil. <laughs> We've got to come to him his way. Through the open door. There's a thing there that says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open the door, man, I opened that door a long time ago. Hallelujah. Amen. We open that door and we let the King of glory come in. But friend, I want to tell you right now, we walk into His very presence through an open door that's wide open and it's got a big sign up the top of it. Welcome! <laughs> Come on in. The devil's having a field day because we are the church that are ignorant of what God has given to us and what God's made available to us. Who? <laughs> you got Frank waking up then. <laughs> Come on through the open door of faith. You should write that down. I'm coming through the open door of faith that God has opened for us. We can all enter in 
By faith in Him. By faith in Him. And find rest and healing and victory and more. Everybody say more. More, more, more. more. God says the just shall live by faith. Our faith must be in Christ our rock. Jesus the Christ is the only way, is the truth and the life. Amen. In Acts chapter 12, we find there was a story there where people were praying all night for Peter's release. They had zeal, but were lacking in something. They prayed all night without ceasing, but their faith did not measure up to the believing that could happen. There's a story here where James, had just, the brother of John, had just been killed. Herod saw that it pleased the people, so he now arrests Peter. Because it was a time of the Passover, they couldn't uh, perform what he wanted to do, so they had to lay him over. They put him in the prison. They had guards all around him. But I want to say God had another plan. Amen? I want to say this, friend. If you trust and you believe in God, if you really honestly believe God, no weapon formed against you can prosper. And here is Peter, and there's a bunch of people praying for his release And the Spirit of God starts to move because Peter, God had a purpose and a plan for his life and his life was not over yet. So God starts moving on his own behalf and he goes in and starts to raise Peter up. We know the story. Then Peter goes to where the people were praying and he knocks on the door. And young Rhonda comes out and she hears Peter and she she gets so excited, she got so excited, she didn't even open up the door. (laughs) She just ran to the, to the people who were praying and said, Hey, Peter's at the door. You know what these faith-filled people said to her? You're mad. You're crazy. Friend, come on. When we pray, do we believe? <laughs> or are we just praying because somebody says, Would you pray for me? Oh, Lord Jesus, help them. Amen. No. Come on, I'm talking about a fervent prayer of a righteous person. A fervent prayer where something starts stirring in your belly, where something starts stirring up on the inside and you start to shout the glory of God. There's another story in the Bible, a man by the name of Zechariah. And he and Elizabeth, his wife, have been praying for a baby for a long time. Been praying for a child, praying for a child, praying for a child. We want a child. Now he starts growing old. Angel of the Lord comes beside him and says, Hey, God has heard your prayers. He was talking to him and said, God has heard your prayer. You want a child? He goes through a list of things there, and then, and then he's going to be great. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to do all these things. Man, what a pedigree. What, what a prophetic word. And at the end of the prophetic word, Zechariah said, how can this be? If you think if an angel walked in and said this and this and this, that we'd believe him. But you see, because he was praying for something in the natural, because he wanted an heir, and his prayers were really a natural sort of a prayer, that when he got old and he lost his natural ability to bring to pass what he was praying for, when his natural ability died, the vision or what he was believing for died with it. We need a resurrection life to flow into us that will cause us to rise above what our, our natural mind, and we've got to bring our natural mind into submission and tell it to get out of my face because I'm going to put the Word of God first in my life. 
And I'm believing that everything God has ever said in the Word of God, His Word to you and I, His letter, will come to pass. Do you believe that? I believe it will come to pass. I believe it would come to pass. They prayed all night without ceasing. They prayed and they prayed. They prayed and they prayed. Nothing seemed to be happening. Luke 1 13, the angel said, Do not be afraid. God's heard your prayer. When God spoke to Mary, she said something that activated something. The thing that the angel spoke to her about was in the natural impossible. She had a mind moment where she said, how can this be? I know no man. But then what I'm talking about today is something else kicked in. You got me? She had a mind moment. How can this be? I know no man. The natural most surely will rise up within you to start with, but in the Right as God's speaking to you, something else has to kick in. Something else has got to kick in. And out of that she rose up and she said, According to your word, be it unto me. God, according to your word, let the sunshine coast know a revival fire that will burn because you said you're going to pour out your spirit and you said that you that none should perish. And my God, you're going to raise up a church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. And my God, something's kicking in right now that says we could be that people. Not just us. Don't misunderstand me. I can only talk for us. I can't talk for the church up the road. I can't talk for anybody else. I can only talk for us. Hallelujah. But I want to be in that number. Hallelujah. I want to be in that army. Glory to God. I want to be one of those people that rises up and says, God, according to your word, be it unto me. Hallelujah. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. If something of the Holy Ghost kicks up on the inside of you, it will cause you to rise up. It will cause you to stand your ground. It will cause you to push back every enemy. It will cause the presence of God to flow into your life. It will cause the anointing to flow. And signs and wonders and miracles will be done in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Anybody else enjoying this? Oh, hallelujah. What an amazing thing. What an amazing God we serve. Jesus said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's Luke 1, verse 38. It was in Mary's desire to do the will of God that the miracle could happen. Because God has spoken, it cannot be otherwise. Can I say that again? Because God has spoken it, it cannot be anything else. It cannot be anything else. It is impossible for it not to come to pass. It is impossible for it not to come to pass. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God is restoring our confidence in his ability to do what he says he will do. God is restoring confidence. How many people, honestly, just shut your eyes for a moment, would say, I need my confidence renewed. Would you just lift up your hand to God, not to me? Because you see, things have eroded. You can erode a big rock. You can erode lots of things. But Father, you see people's hands, you see their hearts. Lord, we want to, to restore our confidence in you, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Restore our confidence. Restore our confidence. He is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. God is restoring our confidence in His ability to do what He says He will do. Friend, you've got to sometimes just have a look at God. God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. Can God do what He says He can do? Answer your question. Yes, He can. God is restoring our confidence in His ability to do what He says He will do. We sang a song the other last week, I think it was. It's, it says, we, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. The Bible says that the devil has to give back seven times. So you just, if, you, if, if the enemy's stolen from you, you just start to say, I'm, I, I want seven times. I'm believing for a, a restoration of God's power, of God's strength, God's anointing, God, God's ability. God, God has an amazing ability. Father, will you please help us today? We're your church down here. My God, we, we know that you've given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Lord, the enemy has sown lies into the minds of men and women. Lord, he's brought uh, hurts and disappointments and brokennesses and, and lack of trust and goodness knows what else, my God. But God, we tonight, today, we say it is not your fault. It is because we perhaps have not put our faith into action. We've spoken uh, natural prayers, but my God, we want to be stirred up in the realm of the Spirit. We want to pray out of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We, we want to pray out of the anointing, my God. We want to see that enemy run in terror. We want to see that enemy defeated in Jesus' name. We want to see the church of the living God risen up. Hallelujah. Rise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. My God, we need a double ghost of the ghost. Hallelujah. I'm asking you right now to stand to your feet in Jesus' name. Throw your hands in the air and start to, start to cry out to God. Start to believe God for a mighty move of His Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Is anything too hard for you? Can a city be saved in a night? Can a youth group be formed in a day? Hallelujah. Can you do it? Can you? Yes, I can, he says. Yes, I can. Oh, I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I just want to slap hands on people today. If you don't mind, I just want to slap some hands on some heads. Hallelujah. I just want to see some people restored in Jesus' name. I want to see the enemy flee. Hallelujah. I, I want to see, the Bible says, stir up the gift that's within you by the laying on of hands. Hallelujah. There's something there about laying on of hands. I cannot give you a gift, but I certainly can. By the laying on of hands, stir up that gift that's in you. Stir it up, hallelujah, that we become mighty champions of God. Mighty champions, hallelujah. I want to tell you, if you're hungry and if you want that, I want you to run from your seats and get out the front here as soon as you can, hallelujah. Come on, let's believe God this morning for a fresh anointing, for a fresh, fresh, fresh flow of God.